What's up? So one of the questions that I see asked from time to time from like beginner programmers that are trying to step it up to become more intermediate, maybe start tinkering more, um, is like what type of program should they build? And I usually say build a calculator. And there's several reasons I say that. So I thought I'd kind of demonstrate it with Python. This is just kind of a loose demonstration. I'll probably mess it up all over the place. But I've prepared some code for this. So basically, the way I look at it with a calculator type of app being a good first choice is it's pretty simple and straightforward. It does, you know, arguably just basic arithmetic and the most basic implementation. So this is sort of my gauge right here is this is like just about the smallest common denominator for what I think a basic calculator would be. And so if you look at this and I mean this applies to this simple little program right here and it can expand and scale to apply to big diverse complex problems too. So if you look at it it's like here's all these features that may need to be implemented or whatever that a calculator might consist of. So we need to zone in on what is like the most basic core essential stuff. Um, if you're doing lean development, it may not even be that per se. You may want to go directly to like satisfying a customer need, like skipping even just core assumptions. But um, just as a beginning programmer, like trying to step it up and get sort of like an idea for like an emergent architecture and incremental development and things like that and separating interface from implementation. Um, this is like, this is a generally easy way to go about it. So if we look at this and we say, okay, what's, you know, the most basic core functionality of a calculator, I would think it would be enter a number, an operator and a number, and then press equals, um, something along those lines. Maybe not square roots just yet. Um, there's usually a way to just use, substitute a formula with these primitives, primitive operators, and uh, to accomplish other things. So, with that in mind, if we implement just the ability to enter a, a number, an operator, and a number, and get a result, I would say that would be about like the most basic prototype of a calculator. Of course, like an advanced calculator, you can hit 5 plus 5 divided by 1 and then equals and do more complex stuff, right? But this is just to sort of like, we just want to do the simplest thing possible at this point because otherwise, I mean, we could just, where would we stop? The calculator could be if we tried to implement all this all at once, that's just way too overwhelming so we start with the simple and we narrow that down so with that in mind we the first thing we want to do is get that number right because we're um, copying the functionality of this basically so the first thing to do is hit a number five okay so right here we're gonna just some basic Python it's pretty self-explanatory um, input's going to print that line to a console and then the person can enter a number and press enter and submit that number into the program which will store it in that variable number one, num1. Um, variable naming is very important right here and I kind of intentionally picked num1. I'm super picky about variable names and I kind of lean towards longer is better but in this case I sort of made a compromise and um, I picked num1 we could have gone with number one, which something more directly readable in plain English like that is what I would prefer. Because then as you read, you know, number one, and then that single equal sign is often, I learned to read it in Pascal as gets. And that's in contrast to a double equal sign that would be a comparison operator. So this is actually an assignment operator, right? So. I would read that like number one, the variable number one gets the input from that prompt. Um, 
but even number one, the reason I picked, I picked Num to be short. Um, I, I would normally prefer to be a little bit more wordy, like I said, unless that really clutters it up. And then instead of putting like first, like spelling out first right there, let me go ahead and, well, yeah, instead of spelling out first right there, which would have looked like last if I would have spelt it the number one ST. So that would have been confusing because then it's like, oh, is that first or last, you know, depending on the font. And, uh, or you could spell out F-I-R-S-T and L-A-S-T, but that's kind of verbose. And then what if you want to throw in a third number or something or fourth? And then there's also the option of naming it um, something besides, like you could just do N1, right? Which would be really simple. Um, that doesn't really read though, necessarily. I mean, it reads less in my opinion, but anyway, I don't even stick with this num one because I don't like that either, but let me just go ahead and move along. So then we need to, uh, get the operator next, which is all the next obvious thing. So we'll do five plus five and then get the second number, which we did on there already. Okay, now we can save this. I'm going to save it as a different file right here. And then we'll run it. Just to, it's good every like block of code to basically like run it and make sure or run your test if you're doing test driven development. So we'll go ahead and enter five and then a plus sign and then a five and nothing happens, which is actually what we expect because we're just asking for the input and we're not doing anything with it. So let's go ahead and do something with that. So this first conditional right here an if statement is gonna check if this operator that we're getting is, um, if it's a plus sign, then it's gonna go ahead and run an addition. But we need to go ahead and in uh, Python, there's not really like a, switch case statement per se. So a uh, stack of is el if else is basically like the recommended way. They also, there's a way with dictionaries that's kind of similar to the switch case, but I just want to keep it sort of um, common core kind of stuff so that people of other languages can follow along too. So anyway, this is basically just going to compare that, um, you know, if that operator is a plus, go ahead and run an addition statement and then we'll put in an else if, an elif in Python specifically, and check for subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, this is the remainder operator, so to speak. And otherwise, if it's not one of those operators, then for now, it's an invalid operator. Later on, we can add to this list and things like that. So looking at this right now, let's go ahead and save it and run it and see where we're at. Okay, five plus five, 55. <laughs> well, that's not right, so. What went wrong there? Okay, I know what went wrong. That's interesting. Before, I thought I remembered getting an error on that. I intentionally left it out and then forgot about it. So what happens here is another thing I want to bring up is that whenever you get input um, in a lot of terminal based programs, it's usually like a line at a time, a string at a time, maybe a character at a time, but you're basically most likely going to get text back in any given programming language, whether it's a, you know, at the console or if it's a field in a text box in a graphical widget thing, it's going to be come back to you as text. So you'll, want to probably as soon as possible sanitize that input, check it, validate it, and um, convert it to a number, extract the number and convert that. So what we can do here, I actually have a little step up file. Oh yeah. So the other thing I did too was I renamed these to num a, num b instead of num1, num2 because that can get crazy. Like if you have 10 numbers, it's like num 10. Is that really the number 10 or whatever? So sorry, I meant to cover that better. But anyway, so you'll notice that change. There's the num a and num b instead of um, 
num1 and num2 and then I've added this wrap these in a float conversion casts it effectively to a float so that turns that string into a number and then it comes down here all this is the same other than the variable names change to be a little bit more uh, general and maybe less confusing so this one's quick and easy because we just hammered it out hammered out the text we have the print statements embedded right in there there's no fancy graphical interface or IO calls or anything um, it's a little bit difficult to read in my opinion if you're not used to staring at the code and it gets a little bit more difficult as we add to it so if we come over here we're going to add a feature that um, allows us to have the option of not only entering the asterisk but also entering a lowercase x or forward slash or a backslash there's two backslashes here because um, this first one escapes the second one because if we didn't escape this one then it would escape this quote so anyway that's just what we have to do to uh, do a single backslash in a string we have to double it up because it's a special character and so this one's the same deal let's go ahead and run it so we'll do five and then we'll do the lowercase x and then a five and then we get the real answer 25 instead of that string because we're converting it to the float so that's all good but uh, this is kind of like not as readable to somebody who's used to the switch case style so one option is to stack those or I guess first what I did here was I split it up based on the um, just like that you can see it just I just added a space in between the L lifts and uh, that might that's probably like debatably not pep 8 I think they tell you to minimize like sandwich that together probably but that's up to you you know this fits in a screen full um, maybe if you just whatever your preference is on that especially right now if you're writing your own program for yourself like just make it readable make it clean um, and put use space liberally if you need to it's really easy to go back and get rid of that stuff it's better than ripping your hair out trying to like go cross-eyed over the code and then right here I've stacked them I just broke it right after that if you see right there right after the or operator I broke it and brought it down a line and indented past I like basically double indented to line up the ops I added this uh, this extra space right here which doesn't really follow the pep 8 style guidelines either but I just for clarity it was one of those things especially in this simple example I wanted it to be really clear so I did that and you know whatever it's your script but that isn't isn't the most popular convention to do that there's certain cases where that is considered okay but that right there probably not so much um, yeah this line C style for clarity needs better decimal formatting so that's the other thing too is just like sticking with a calculator example if we come over here and hit equals we don't get that point zero unless it's necessary you know if it's um 5.5 .5 times 2 oh <laughs> what am I thinking 5.1 times 2 so you can see there we get just as many decimal places as we need we don't get 10.2000 or anything we just whatever we need no uh, no extra uh, prefixed or uh, trailing zeros okay so that must be in this one. Oh, this one I just added comments to um, that's a code smell I'm sure a lot of people know but that's something if you just need a little bit more clarification go in there and just add a little single line comment it makes it a little more readable that doesn't involve quite extracting a function or a method just yet or anything so that really is the quick simple answer and it's okay to do that but once you do that it's also saying hey maybe this would be better wrapped in an addition function maybe or maybe this whole if else block would be better at least itself wrapped off in another function or something because it's starting to get more complex and take up you know 
roughly a screen full or more of space. And then finally over here it's the formatting if you see that pop in right there in the beginning of the print statement. And I have used um, the Python 2 style print statements which I didn't ever see anything wrong with those. I don't know why there's I mean F strings are cool and stuff but it's like this isn't that much more complex and it's totally compatible but anyway I just chose to use those I think they're cool and they're worth mentioning this type of uh, doing this type of formatted string right here with a sort of like a C style deal and then you do this little percent mark and then after that in parentheses you put all your expressions that will go back and fill all these in so anyway it's doing the the number a and the number b it's adding them together and this one's sort of just an example to show um, these other ones i've done to eight decimal places and so what this is saying is do a total of nine the g means a total of all i'm pretty sure of all nine um, 99 decimal places without any preceding or trailing zeros and then this would be more like a calculator where it's much less digits but I wanted to be able to demonstrate real quick what it looks like with a lot of digits not saved okay so uh, I can just do something simple like point 0.1 plus 0.2 and there you can see there's after that it would lose precision anyway so that number probably should be maybe even longer I can't remember but that's one of the good tests for floating point numbers to kind of see what's going on under the hood and you can see that out here because of certain internal factors to do with the way that um, computers can't handle certain numbers that aren't powers of two very well so but you can see like all the accuracy we need right there that's that's all golden so we'll just tell it to cut or round it off basically at um at the eight decimal points which okay we'll just run it again with a different operator to get that same effect so let's do five divided by Four. and there you can see it's a lot more like a standard calculator so this is all just kind of to say just to show this like little evolution of like these types of features into a program um, this print statement though that's a major code smell because that's IO that's input and output this specifically output right so we're baking in output with that print statement right there. Like if we want to convert this to a graphical user interface later, we could do it, we could override this statement, but that's not a good idea to try and do something like that. So because a Python programmer is going to expect that to do one thing or whatever. So it would be better to like basically come out with a statement maybe called display or something to that effect. And then behind the scenes that could just call print for now and uh, in the future that could call something different or that could be handled different that could evolve and as long as your interface is internal and like private to your program or private to certain parts of your program you can I mean you're the only one at that point who's really gonna have to uh, go through and fix up that interface if you change something about it like in a breaking way so if that's not too big of a deal, you're free to, to basically evolve your own interface. And even with the public one, I mean, there's going to probably be some evolution there. So the deal with public interfaces is you don't really push them out until you have something production worthy. Or if you do, you put it out under the conditions that like, hey, this is very likely to change. But I would suggest not even doing that really any more than you have to, because as a user on the user side of that, I've been upset with that where people want especially with the hot new technology they want to pick stuff up and get rocking with it and they do that and they start building up this like software infrastructure and then all of a sudden a lot of things aren't compatible or they get broken later and it's just 
it ends up being like a for the early adopters it ends up making it a sour taste in their mouth i feel like so release stable interfaces and change them at very obvious increments and allow that change to happen gracefully ideally oh yeah i didn't cover the little things i've just been not finishing this so that's why it's all like rough content i'm all shaky sounding trying to read it off to you but um hopefully the next video will be better so easier to read difficult to notice or alternatives so that's why i stacked them and then down here the operators line c style needs better decimal formatting which we took care of that one doesn't have anything so this one this is talking about like future features to make it more realistically like the calculator it's not looping um, we could do that in a by doing a while loop and maybe pushing stuff into functions too many reasons to change which we went over the uh, not only if we want to change the print statement but we also have a lot of duplication here for uh, repeating ourselves so whenever you see all that kind of stuff and this really should be consistent up here that would really look like that so that that's where you hear the don't repeat yourself and this is why it's good to stop at these simple little like we haven't even barely begun to build the calculator but before we wrote that 900 times or however many times it takes for whatever project you know if you think of that abstractly as being like some little component some little option or feature in a program and we sit there and repeat ourselves and repeat ourselves and never stop and like look back at what we're doing so by doing it right here after just i mean we could have really done that that could have happened way earlier in the process too but anyway it happened where it happened and we see like this is way too much duplication here so um there's three strikes and you automate for testing from manual to automated testing is one rule of thumb i like to apply that to uh, don't repeat yourself as well so you know it may be even two times but for sure once you're writing something like three or more times it's like get it out there so one option to do would be um just to make it just the first not necessarily the best option in the world but for right now quick and dirty option that can always get refactored later but get it out of the way before it becomes a big problem would be uh name that so what is that's decimal places i guess would be i'm just following common convention for all caps with an underscore spaces for uh constant names like symbolic constants in python these constants aren't necessarily like they're not enforced as constants at least i don't know maybe a new version might do that but not up through like 3.7 or whatever at least but probably not don't expect any python to uh to enforce that that's just a convention to tell you hey don't change this variable okay so that's the uh looks like that's what that should be so by changing that we can just um, literally change this out grab that copy it i'll use the mouse and then just come over here and paste that and even instead of like pasting it if i just want to make sure like i have everything right if it was a bigger copy and paste operation just stop and run it and just check it out so was that probably the addition so we got a problem there so it's a good thing i didn't go through and go ahead and do all that so name display is not defined what was i thinking here oh display i still have right here so probably not that big of a deal 20 cool so it's working like that I've got that part right I could have done a replace but I figured I'd already pasted in that value okay so now if we want to change the decimal places to say just like two it only changes in one spot right there save it run it 
enter number 1.44444 plus 3333 and hmm I didn't know it would go to scientific notation like that maybe I'll try like a more basic one um, so we'll go 5.555 plus seven points okay yeah so it's total of two decimal places period like on either side of the decimal so that's right that's why I picked that because on the little calculator I was sampling from the sharp LC mate EL 233s that's how many places it had well I probably like drag this out to another half hour video and I was thinking like it wouldn't even go out to 10 minutes so did I cover everything so this doesn't use test driven development um, yeah right here not so we covered the wet dry format stuff it's not uh, developed with test driven development it's error prone for manual testing you've seen like the hand replacing that I've gone through and done the right here there's where I, earlier I had replaced all the num twos with num bs in all these files because I changed my mind there's an option to do that within multiple files but there's so much I mean the more the quicker you do it the more error prone maybe you could argue it is or vice versa it's like it's just it's all error prone so instead of doing it like anything you want to test anything that you want to go to that command line and test um, write a test for so if I want to keep testing 5 plus 5 all I've got to do is write a test but that's that's not here right now this is just this I'm keeping it simple but I want to come back and do this maybe with more polish and take the test driven approach and by more polish I just mean um, more focus like maybe even off a script or something so that I don't ramble on but yeah so just keep that in mind like whenever you do this like this is your manual testing interface right there that inner number that da, 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 um, that could really be this all could be stuck in a loop like we could just say while um, while one you know like if I want to be like really lazy and then just put that all over there let's check it out five 25 and our number four plus five so there you go that's how you can do steps and if you were doing this under a version control system like git every one of those like you know basically the equivalent of every one of these like types of changes you'd want to be saving a commit with each like feature and the way to word the feature is to sort of like with an active voice of um, if that's the right way to put it or instead of saying like I don't even remember the wrong way to do it <laughs> but you just say like add comments to if else block like as if it's like adding a feature you know it's adding functionality that's the the general right way toward a good thing anyway I'm shutting up now thanks for checking this out